Over the past 10 years of my bow hunting career, I've been blessed to pursue multiple mature bucks. However, this one is special to me. A whitetail in the western creek bottoms. One that blows me away every time I look at him. Of all the long sits I've spent daydreaming about harvesting a buck of this caliber, even my imagination could never come close to creating a buck quite like this. Never will I forget the initial shock and awe of seeing him while glassing the creek bottom. Never will I forget the adrenaline pulsing through every inch of my body for the entirety of the stock. Never will I forget the deep-seated appreciation and respect I felt towards this animal when I finally wrapped my hands around his velvet-covered antlers. Never will I forget this experience with one of my lifelong best friends by my side. This is the story of my biggest whitetail ever. Well, this morning is the opening morning of the Nebraska Archery Deer Opener. So Mike and I, we're gonna split up. We've got a big bluff behind us and Mike is gonna head to the west, I'm gonna head to the east. We're gonna glass, there's a few ag fields and stuff down below and a little creek bottom. So hopefully we can turn up a nice buck, but we'll see what we can find. Well, like Josh said, we split up this morning. I came over to this glassing hill and he went to a different one. So far I've seen 37 deer uh, it's been about probably two hours of light now, so I think most everything is bedded down. There's a couple does and fawns below me, but that's about it. I did see one pretty nice buck. I think he's a borderline shooter. I think I think either one of us might be happy with him. It was pretty dark when I saw him, so I couldn't get really good footage, but um, I got some pretty decent footage, and he looks pretty nice. So I think my plan now is to circle back around and try to get into where I think they're bedding. Um, I lost him behind the trees probably an hour ago so I kind of have an idea where I think they might be going but it's gonna be really tough there's a lot of trees and small bushes and stuff they could bed by and, and totally hide themselves so it's gonna be a really tough hunt really tough to find them again but that's kind of our only option at this point so I think I'll head over there and see what I can find what's well, a little after eight o'clock right now I was watching those three bucks bedded and a truck drove down the road. They all got up, took off, running to the north. I look over to the north, they kind of lose them in the trees, look over to the north. I see 12 other white-tailed deer, most of them being bucks, and another shooter in there. It looked like he was a five by four and it actually kind of looked like he had a little dagger coming off the base, one of his bases, kind of next to his forehead. And a coyote, it almost looked like a black coyote. I didn't get any footage of it but chased the deer out into the field, back down into the creek, and I just watched him walk all the way over at least three quarters of a mile, and they're down back in the thick cottonwoods down in the creek. So, I can't see any of them, but I know they're in there. And uh, the three bucks that were by themselves met up and got together with those 12 deer that that coyote spooked, and they're all in there. So there's 15 of them total from what I could see probably 11 or 12 of them being bucks. And uh, three or four really nice ones, two for sure shooters. One looks like it's a real nice, non-typical, uh, probably 170 inch whitetail. One of the biggest whitetail I've ever seen for sure. He looked like he's still in full velvet, but it's hard to tell from this distance. His G2s are split on each side. His right side's kind of got a funky main beam going on, but He's a gorgeous buck. He's he's nice. Let's go. As I was glassing for those mule deer bucks, I ran back over to this other spot I was at early in the morning and glassed them up right away. Watched them run probably half a mile, but they, they stopped in a group of trees and pretty sure they bedded down. I'm just gonna watch them for about 20 to 30 more minutes and make sure they're bedded down for good and for the day. But if that's the case, we have a pretty good pinpoint on their location, so and go pick up Josh and uh, make a game plan and hopefully get a stock in this morning. 
The bucks in total have moved at least over a mile this morning since where I first saw them from. And uh, we, we think we know where they're bedded down at. They kind of got to a fence line there and there's some falling down cottonwoods and a lot of cover. Can't really see into there really well from this point and Micah can't either. Like I said, there's just a lot of cover. So uh, we've mainly got a west wind kind of out of the southwest, but looking at the forecast, it's supposed to switch to the northwest. Uh, so we're gonna come in from the east side and there's a slight hill there and hopefully we can pop over the hill and get a better vantage of where they're at. And then we can circle back around to the creek and hopefully slip into shooting distance and make something happen. Opening day is going about as good as it could so far. We'll see if we can make it happen.
Paul once just stood up and was just eating the leaves off of one of the trees. I think I can tell which log they're all behind. I think we should go further up north because there's more logs, more cover up there we can get behind. I think we can probably make it from here, but I think we've got a good enough wind. It's coming from the west enough that it's going to pass up and miss them. So I think we're going to head up and give it a try. Over the next three and a half hours, this buck stood up six different times. Being within 30 yards of such a majestic, mature animal was an experience we had both dreamed of for years. We knew we could get a shot at any moment, so we had to be on the ready at all times. Our hearts were pounding out of our chest like never before. Seeing the deer's reactions, how he moves, how he feeds, how he beds, taught us a lot about the activity of white-tailed deer. stepping to the right into Josh's shooting lane.
He's spinning. I don't know what to say. <laughs> should say that I should probably practice more, but I know I do that more than most. <laughs> I don't think that was the issue. It's just bow hunting. Nothing's perfect in bow hunting. You strive to do everything as perfect as you can, but it doesn't always happen that way. If that uh, if that four by four wouldn't have bedded down there, I would have had a perfect 25, 30 yard shot right there over that log. But his rack was blocking the shot for me. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but. I thought about drawing back when that buck put his head down and I was like, no, he lifts his head up and I hit a tie and it's, there ain't no way, it's just not an ethical shot. So I drew back when he started walking to the right and kind of paused behind that limb, I didn't have a shot. And uh, I was almost ready to let down and he took another step forward and it was right underneath that log and I definitely didn't want to hit that log. And if you watch on the video in slow motion, you can see it's, it's an inch and a half or two inches from that log, so it's about, about as good as I could get it, but I probably should have waited at least another couple seconds. Waited four hours for that shot, but it's not perfect. I was just walking the blood trail and I found a little piece of the bottom corner of the lung, so we thought it was just a liver shot, but he did get at least part of one lung, so that's a really good sign. That's nuts. I've never seen a chunk of lung come out like that before. It's kind of hard 
to walk and not see blood, honestly. We last saw him right up here. I don't see anything yet, but we're gonna keep inching closer and see if we can see him at least. Have a ditch right there. Is that the creek? I don't know. I think it is. He might be right down in the bottom of that creek. I'm just trying to see tines or something through the trees just in case he's further. I see him. Alive. He looks dead, but he might not be. He's right on the left side of this split tree right here. His rack's down. His back's facing downhill. I don't know, let's just... I might take my pack off and slowly work up and just see. Better be safe than sorry, that's for sure. He sure looks dead, but I'm not giving him any second chances. That is a giant body deer. Look at that thing, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. Holy cow. <laughs> I can't even hold him up. Look at that thing. Look at his left side. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Eight points with that bottom one. This one. I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Holy cow. It's just starting to strip his velvet right on the tips just a little bit, but mostly, mostly all velvet. Oh my gosh, that's so relieving. The last thing you want to do as a bow hunter is, is make a shot and not watch him go down or, or second guess yourself. But sure was a good sign when Micah found that chunk of lung as we were walking over here. This is probably the biggest, oldest, Whitetail buck. This is the biggest, oldest whitetail buck I have ever shot and ever had the chance of hunting. This thing's a giant, an absolute giant. Jesus, man. I can't believe that worked, honestly. That's insane. He's got that little. He's got two tube. drops, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, two drops right there. This nub off the side. Look at that. Is that that's, that's an antler. That's bone. Wow. That's nuts. He's got all these points on his back. Oh yeah. Look at that. Jeez. 
Oh man, dude. Let's pull them out here in the sun a little bit. Well, tag punch on opening day. It's first for me, first velvet buck. Biggest whitetail I've ever killed, that's for sure. We got up on the glass and knobs this morning, me and Micah, we were in two different spots. And I was up there for an hour before I even saw a deer, and this was the first one I saw. And I watched him. He got in with a group of other bucks and a few does, and there was a black dog or a coyote or something chased him, and they ran at least a mile to the southwest here. And I told Micah to get eyes on him. He watched him, I watched him. I don't even know what time it was when they bedded down. We, could, we just kind of lost him, we didn't see him bed. And we circled around, and man, we've been stalking this deer all day long, ever since we were on the hills this morning glassing him. We got to position about, what was it, 1.30? And we sat there until a little after five before we were able to get a shot. He stood up six different times and didn't have a shot until the very last time. And he went out, took a couple steps to the right. I was at full draw for a little while. And he took one step forward and I thought, man, that's it. And I took the shot and I thought, ooh, right away. I thought, man, one lung liver. And we watched him run. He stopped 64 yards. He had no idea we were there. And I sent another one, hit him, hit him a little bit high. You know, I was just kind of sick to my stomach. We watched him run, I don't know, 400 yards probably, straight north. We watched him spin around and, and we watched him go down, but we weren't sure if he bedded down or if he was he was done. And, uh, you know, as a bow hunter, you hate to see that. You practice all year long. You do everything as perfect as you can to make a perfect shot, but it doesn't always happen like that. But fortunate enough, we gave him just a little bit of time and we came over and here he was dead. So, couldn't be more happy. First velvet buck and a dandy. First kill of the season means the first meet of the season. Rachel's gonna be super excited. It's been about two months since we've had any fresh deer meat in the cooler, so she's gonna be super excited to eat some fresh deer steaks, that's for sure. Not an ounce of meat's going to waste. We got all the quarters out, back straps, hanging tenders. It's gonna be delicious. The appreciation that I have for this wide open land and the animals that call this place home is unmatched. To be able to come out and hunt where one of my greatest friends grew up is a privilege I don't take for granted and something I look forward to every year without end. To pursue these animals in a place so rugged, so wild, with a bow in hand is not an easy feat, but for that I am grateful. At the end of the day, I am beyond thrilled to punch my tag on this deer, my biggest whitetail ever. But as I've learned over the years, it's not all about the kill. The connection with nature runs deep. To take a life is not something we as hunters take lightly. The respect we have towards these animals only grows with every pursuit. Never will I forget the memories made during this hunt alongside my lifelong friend. I encourage you to continue to follow your passion, no matter how discouraging it may get. You never know when your next opportunity might turn into an experience of a lifetime.